Hi everyone, in this video I will be building a high-powered vortex cannon that runs on propane as fuel. A vortex cannon you might be familiar with from science demonstrations that use a garbage can with a hole cut in the bottom and a diaphragm on the back that you pull back with elastic and release to send off smoke rings. Now this is pretty similar to that, but in a design that allows a much higher power vortex to be formed, one that leaves the barrel with a great amount of speed and hits with a good deal of impact, even at a long distance. Now I've done this on my channel before, I made a vortex cannon previously using this as the barrel. The barrel of a high powered vortex cannon is the most difficult thing to make because it is a cone shape and it's hard to find a cone like this in any sort of off the shelf part. You're not going to find something you can use as the, as the barrel for a vortex cannon in your everyday hardware store, you're going to have to make it yourself. Now in my previous video I used fiberglass and epoxy resin to make this barrel. And there are some downsides to using these materials. First of all, they're a little bit expensive. The epoxy resin costs about $30 for a gallon. You're probably going to make a sticky mess the first time you use fiberglass, and it has some serious health concerns. So for this project, I really wanted to come up with an easier way to make a cone for a barrel that's very rigid and is much easier and safer to make than my previous model. Now for the new barrel of my cannon, what I've come up with to make a rigid cone is to use a roll of plastic landscaping trim. This is a 4 inch wide by 40 foot long roll of plastic trim. This would usually be used to separate a lawn from landscaping around a house. And you can find this in most hardware stores pretty inexpensively. This whole roll cost only $17. And this is basically the only thing you'll need to make the barrel of a vortex cannon. The first thing that needs to be done in order to convert these rolls of plastic into a cone is to bind the outside of the roll together so that it won't unravel. For this one I've just used some of this fiberglass reinforced packaging tape, which is very strong, to wrap around the entire outside of the roll and that will keep it secure. The only downside to this is you'll have tape on the outside of the finished cone and so it looks a little bit messy. For this roll I'll be using a different method since this plastic is HDPE, high density polyethylene plastic. That is a type of plastic that we can safely weld simply by heating it. And so I'll be using a torch to weld this outermost edge of the roll to the layer beneath it, and that will hold the roll together and have a cleaner look than this packaging tape on the outside. I've used a clamp to bring the outside edge of this roll a little bit tighter to the inner portion that I'm going to be welding it to. And from here it's a pretty easy task. You gently heat the outside edge with a small torch, and I'll be using a large wrench to be a heat sink so that I don't melt too far past the edge that I'm wanting to weld to the layer beneath. Most of the heat should be focused on the upper lip, allowing it to melt and naturally fall into the lower layer of plastic. If you focus too much heat on the lower layer, you can melt right through it, and then the weld doesn't do much good. Take special note that this is polyethylene plastic. It's not a chlorinated form of plastic, which would give off terrible chemicals when burned. Polyethylene is quite safe. It's very similar chemically to paraffin candle wax. Now that this has been welded, I still do need to use a little bit of fiberglass reinforced tape so that we can suspend this roll in the air, holding it by the outside layer of the roll. And I'll be using fiberglass tape to wrap around this and create straps that we can do that from. Now that this roll of plastic is suspended in the air, held by the outside layer with our tape, we can begin to form our cone by pressing the center layers of this coil downward. Now depending how far we push these layers down, we can make a very long and narrow cone, or we can make a short stubby wide angle cone. For a vortex cannon, this is the angle that we're looking for. I forget what the exact numbers are, but I'll put it on the screen as to the degree of the slant on this cone. 
So what I'll do is begin working these inner layers of our roll downward, and our cone will begin to form. It can make it a bit easier to pull this into a cone shape if you use a pair of needle nose pliers to twist up the center of this coil just a little bit to take out some of that friction between the layers. It does take a little bit of physical effort to get the cone to begin to form, but once you've pulled the first few layers out, it becomes much easier to get it into this final shape. And right now it's just a matter of adjusting each layer so that I have a nice consistent angle all the way down the length of the cone. And you can do that by eyeballing the spacing between each layer. See, these two are closer together than the ones around. So I need to pull these two layers a little bit further out to get that even slant. And of course, I'm aiming for an angle similar to this cone here. All right, I think this is looking pretty good. It's not perfect, and it's not exactly the same shape as my original barrel, but like I said, you just need to get close to this shape. This should work just fine. So the next step will be to hold this cone into the shape that I've made it into. To do that, we have a few different options. The easiest way I've found to hold these cones together is to use a series of nails heated in a torch so they can be pressed right through the side of the plastic. A nail is put into each row of the spiral, making a line down the entire length of the cone, so each layer is joined to the one beneath it. I'll make three of these rows of nails evenly spaced around the outside of the cone, so that it's held from unraveling on all sides. The tip of the nails doesn't interfere too badly with the creation of the vortex inside the cone, so you don't have to worry about removing them. The only issue with making a cone this way is that it doesn't quite come to a sharp point. So once we have all the nails in holding this cone rigid, I just trim up the end a little bit and then I use a plastic funnel cut down to shape to bring the tip of this cone to be a little bit narrower. And I hold this on with duct tape. And with that, the cone is now ready for use as a cannon barrel. And for my purposes, I decided to mount it to a sturdy tripod so that I would be able to aim the cannon without having to hold it. Now that the barrel is complete, the rest of this cannon assembly is very easy. We just have to make the combustion chamber, which will be a 8 inch long section of 3 inch diameter PVC pipe. The fuel source for the cannon will be propane from a spiral flame torch head like this. In order to attach the torch to our chamber, we use a series of PVC adapters. This one is three inch to one and a half inch, and then one and a half inches down to half inch. And our torch head will fit right into a small piece of one half inch PVC pipe, which goes into this final adapter. And that is where we will inject our fuel and ignite the cannon. On the other side, we have a one half by two inch PVC adapter, and this two inch end will fit right over the end of our cannon barrel. Now with my chamber fully assembled, this project is completed. And all I have to do to fire my cannon is take my torch head. This is a spiral flame torch that's very important for this project. Insert the head of the torch into the back end of the chamber. Then take the two inch opening on the chamber and press it tightly onto the cone on the back of the barrel. Hold down the trigger on the torch partially for five seconds, then pull it fully to ignite. And it's easy as that. Now I didn't stop at just one barrel for my cannon. When I figured out the method to make these cones, I built this secondary barrel. And to this one, I've made an additional modification. Here I have a fog machine and I've piped the output of the fog machine into the backside of the barrel for this cannon. So that as I'm filling this barrel with fuel, I can also be filling it with fog, which will be carried along with the vortex that it fires, giving us an excellent visual effect.
The last step I've taken to make these vortex rings even more visible is to take a laser line module and orient it along their direction of travel. This takes a cross section of the vortex as it travels through the air and makes it very visible. And you can't deny it looks pretty cool. Even with my slow motion camera though, the vortex rings travel very quickly and it's hard to get a good look at them. Well, my sponsor for this video is once again, brilliant.org. If this is your first time hearing about Brilliant, they're an excellent educational website that specializes in math, science, and logic especially. And they teach these subjects through a series of courses in which you participate in puzzles and interactivity that really keeps you engaged and it's a really fun way to learn. I was just looking at Brilliant's problem of the week, which this week is the question is, if the Earth suddenly stopped spinning, how would the objects on the surface behave? Would they shoot off into space in a straight line? Would they follow the curve of the Earth, not leaving the ground at all? It's an interesting question because we are spinning at about a thousand miles an hour on the surface of the Earth. So if the Earth just stopped moving under our feet and we had a thousand miles an hour of momentum to deal with, there would be some issues. So I found it to be an interesting question. I think I know the answer, but I haven't clicked through yet to find out if I'm correct. And whether or not you get the answer right or wrong, you can participate in discussion to figure out why. This is just one example of what Brilliant has to offer, questions like this every week. So check out Brilliant in the video description below. There'll be a link down there and there will be a special offer for my subscribers if you click through that link. Thank you for watching. Please leave me comments below. I still read all of my comments and I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs> What's up, Mose? You want this thing, huh? <laughs> What's up, buddy? What are you doing? <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> All right, see you next time.